good morning, everyone. Uh, as you can tell, I'm an individual who needs no introduction, uh, but my name is Peter Ferries. I'm the Chief of Vascular Surgery here at Mount Sinai. Uh, and it's terrific to look out at this uh, audience, uh, see it totally full, and it's a real testament to what Dr. Krishna has been able to accomplish uh, in bringing this uh, meeting to such a high level. Uh, this morning I'd like to talk about the use of endovascular stent grafts for the treatment of aortic dissections. Uh, these are my disclosures. Uh, stent graft repair, or TVAR, has been established for the treatment of chronic thoracic aortic dissection that has been associated with aneurysmal degeneration. Uh, let me just show you one uh, case that can serve as an example. This is an individual who experienced a dissection and within about 18 months had a progression of severe uh, aneurysmal degeneration. You can see the dissection itself occurs at the typical location just distal to the left subclavian artery uh, and the true and false lumens are visible here. You can see this significant narrowing of the true lumen and then down into the visceral segment. On CT scanning, uh, the aneurysm is present in the proximal descending thoracic aorta. The true lumen, as is typical, is quite small, uh, reduced in caliber, uh, has this uh, crescentic shape, and then the false lumen is the area of aneurysmal uh, degeneration. Uh, the true lumen extends down through the descending uh, uh, thoracic aorta, and in this instance, all the visceral vessels were supplied off the true lumen, uh, which makes uh, repair more straightforward. We were able to repair this, although we did perform a carotid subclavian bypass, and that's fairly typical in these cases that may be necessary. Uh, once the stent graft has been placed, uh, you can see there's exclusion of the uh, aneurysm sac. And this patient, in fact, is approximately eight years out, removed from their procedure, and remains with an excluded uh, aneurysm, at, which has reduced markedly in size. So this can be very successful for aneurysmal degeneration as associated with chronic uh, uh, aortic dissections. Uh, as I mentioned, we typically will have to perform a carotid to subclavian bypass. Uh, this gains this additional length. In this particular case, uh, the patient actually has a bovine configuration of their uh, brachycephalic trunk uh, with a left carotid originating from the trunk itself. We then perform the bypass surgery to revascularize the left vertebral artery and left subclavian artery. However, if you look at the data overall for uh, aneurysm-related mortality and compare patients that are treated for standard degenerative aneurysms shown by this life table analysis in the blue line or with chronic aortic dissection shown by the green line, there is a significant reduction in uh, survivorship uh, for those who have acute aortic dissections. Uh, and this is a concern with uh, the, the treatment utilizing these techniques. This has been studied in a couple of trials. Uh, most recently, Medtronic has performed the Valiant uh, trial to look at dissections in the United States. This was the IDE pivotal trial, uh, utilizing the Valiant Captiva device for complicated type B aortic dissection. So these are patients who have malperfusion or aortic rupture uh, associated with their acute dissection. If you look at all-cause mortality, it was 8% within 30 days, and these are the uh, etiologies of the mortality. And if you look at freedom from all-cause mortality, it's uh, very good extending out to uh, one year. In looking at aortic remodeling associated with stent graft placement, there's a significant regression of the false lumen in 85% of patients at six months, up to 95, almost 95% at 12 months. Uh, in terms of expansion of the true lumen, that occurs in virtually all the patients. And then with partial or complete thrombosis comes this uh, lumen uh, loss in the, the false lumen in these patients. There were no ruptures at uh, 30 days or 12 months. There were, however, two type A retrograde dissections, and we'll talk a little bit more about those uh, in just a minute. So it was based on these trial results that in uh, January of this year, the FDA approved uh, endovascular stent grafting uh, for uh, treatment of complicated aortic dissections in the acute setting. There have been two other trials that have been performed to look at uncomplicated uh, acute aortic dissections. Again, these are type B dissections, and the two and five-year results are available. These, these uh, studies were performed in European centers. And again, the primary endpoint at two years was all-cause mortality, but secondary endpoints included some of the things we've talked about, uh, false lumen thrombosis, uh, true lumen expansion, uh, and other uh, secondary endpoints as listed. Uh, 
When you look at the cumulative survival at two years after randomization, and again, these patients are with uncomplicated type B dissections, and they've been randomized to either optimal medical therapy or treatment with an endovascular stent graft. The optimal medical therapy is slightly higher in this life table analysis than with endovascular grafting. Uh, this was not a statistically significant difference. No statistically significant difference when looking at freedom from uh, aorta-related mortality at 24 months, and similarly, no difference in freedom from a progressive aortic disease, again, at 24 months. So in the 24-month time period, uh, no difference in these important parameters being followed. Um, there was a significant improvement in terms of aortic remodeling, which was seen in 90% of the patients that were treated with endovascular stent grafts uh, within these two trials. However, if you look at the uh, long-term outcomes beyond two years, you do begin to see significant differences between the two uh, treatment groups. Uh, in the medical therapy, uh, there is significant late uh, and midterm mortality that was not observed uh, in the patients treated with endovascular stent grafts. So beyond two years, uh, the two curves start to diverge, uh, favoring the uh, use of uh, stent grafting in these uncomplicated dissections. Uh, if you look at the five-year results, again, no significant difference in all-cause mortality. This difference was not statistically significant, uh, but there is a significant reduction for the stent graft group in aortic-specific mortality, uh, again, at five years, and a statistically significant reduction in disease progression in the aorta uh, in the stent graft group. So the late results seem to uh, provide some impetus or favor uh, stent graft repair. Uh, Reintervention is also more common in these patients that have acute dissections. If you look at this life table, it shows freedom from reintervention. Again, the degenerative aneurysms have the uh, lowest rate of reintervention. Those with chronic dissection uh, have a, uh, a slightly increased rate of reintervention. And then acute dissection has a considerable rate of reintervention that really increases out at about five or six years. Uh, this may be due to initial uh, treatments in which not the entire thoracic segment where the dissection occurred was treated uh, and there was subsequent degeneration in the distal segments that hadn't been treated initially. I think modification of techniques may improve these, the, this the need for late-term uh, revision or uh, uh, reintervention. Uh, again, as we had talked about, the aortic-related mortality significantly greater, if you look at uh, survivorship on this life table analysis, significantly greater long-term mortality, which is predominantly within the first year for these patients with acute dissections as compared to chronic dissections or standard degenerative aneurysms. Uh, so the conclusion from this study really is that uh, elective uh, stent graft repair does give favorable aortic remodeling. Uh, Reinterventions occur uh, within the uh, group, but this may be something that can be addressed with improved techniques. Um, and overall, the five-year outcomes begin to favor uh, intervention in these uncomplicated cases. One note of caution, however, and we had alluded to this earlier, is that there is the potential uh, in these uh, studies for the generation or progression of a type A dissection in a patient with a previous, uh, only had a previous type B dissection. This is seen more commonly in patients that have uh, a bare proximal stent on the stent graft, uh, so that's uh, not advisable to utilize that bare proximal stent. Uh, stainless steel stent grafts have greater radial force and have been associated with an increased degree of progressive type type A dissections. Uh, the more proximal the stent graft is implanted, the higher the likelihood of a type A dissection. So if you're distal to the left subclavian, it's a lower rate than if you're uh, at the level of the left carotid or the left level of the brachycephalic trunk. Uh, the further proximal you are, the, the greater the increased chance of uh, progressive type A dissection. And then the use of balloon inflation at the uh, proximal in implantation site has also been associated with increase in type A dissection. Uh, very importantly, the rate of uh, dissection is also uh, type A dissection is associated with the etiology of the uh, disease that's being treated with the stent graft. And so for patients who have acute dissections as the uh, uh, etiology that requires treatment, there is an increased rate of the type A dissection as compared to either chronic dissections or standard degenerative aneurysms. So in conclusion, uh, endovascular stent graft repair has been established as an effective technique for managing aneurysmal degeneration resulting from chronic type B dissection. 
and the vascular repair offers an additional effective technique that can be used to manage acute type B dissections that are associated with malperfusion or rupture or other significant complications. Finally, the role for endovascular repair in uncomplicated type B dissection appears to hold significant promise. However, the accrual of additional experience will be necessary before it can be established as the standard of care. Thank you very much.